Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our web conference today. This is Fast Track Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations Tech Talk. Today's topic, GST and GTE Part 3, Extending GTE. My name is Janice and I'm going to be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live Events and the audio can be heard through your PC speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. Participation in the meeting today indicates your consent to being included in the meeting recording. Attendees may access the web conference recording via the same registration link that was used to attend today's live broadcast. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, you can turn on the Q&A panel by selecting the question mark icon located in the upper right hand corner of your screen. We do have presenters standing by to respond to your questions throughout the session. Now, on to the presentation. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Senior PM Lead Richard Luan, and supporting Richard on Q&A is Senior Program Manager Prabhat Bhargava. So without any further delay, Richard, welcome and thanks for joining us. Okay, so this is the second session about GTE. So in, uh, in our Wednesday session, I introduced you uh, what it introduce you what a what a GTE is about. Basically, it is a global tax engine, and uh, it is a configurable tax engine in area of tax applicability, calculation, and posting. So, since it's a configurable engine, um, it is possible for our customer partner to extend the configuration to to fulfill some other non-supported scenario uh, in a standard Microsoft configuration. So today, I'm going to show you um, two extension scenario. Which one is anti-dumping duty, another is SEJ. So basically, by demo these two sessions, I'm going to show you how to add a new task component and how to change the existing component for tax applicability and posting, and also calculation. So. First, anti-dumping duty. So anti-dumping duty basically is a, is a special customer duty, which is levied on a certain product. And it is calculated by unit. So basically it's not like standard or normal task code, which is normally calculated by the net amount. It is calculated per unit. And so we have the business requirement. Then from our GTE perspective, we need to analysis the requirements, the impact to the X++ part and the uh, configuration part. So there's, so basically it's, we just need to add a new task component to the standard GST configuration. We don't need to change any UI to in, in finance and operation. So there is no X++ change. From configuration perspective, we need to add a new task component for this anti-dumping duty. And uh, since it's a customer duty, so we should add it under the customer duty tax type. And we need to make sure that the tax is calculated per unit, not by the net amount or in the end it is by the accessible value. And from the applicability perspective, it is not applicable for all the import-export uh, import, order. It is only applicable for certain items. So basically, that is a way um, to analyze the business requirement from GTE perspective. Then let me move to the um, finance and operation to show you how to extend the configuration. So let me first uh, try to create an import order. So now I'm using the standard GST configuration in this environment. And uh, let me try to create an import order. So I mark it as the import order, which is a Indian localization uh, feature. Okay. 
Let me choose another one. Save. So by clicking tax document, Uh, wait a second, there is a... So I need to... Yeah, I need to change the tax information to make sure there's an um, IEC number. So I specify the custom tariff code. Okay, so now we have, um, oh, wait a second. Um, sorry, I'm just, I need to switch back to the, switch back to the standard configuration. Let me go to tax setup. So because in this environment, I enabled several other configuration which actually support anti-dumping duty. So now I activate the standard configuration so I go back to uh, the tax stock uh, purchase uh, import order so I click recalculate so as you can see we have customer duty and uh, IGST there is no anti-dumping so so next I'm going to show you how to extend the standard configuration by adding this new tax component so I'm going to electronic reporting workspace. So I hope you still remember that if you want to change the behavior, the first thing you need to do is add a new configuration provider for your organization. Suppose it is Contoso. It's a kind of workspace, so I set it, make it active. Let me refresh. Second. Oh, let me. Let me check. Configuration providers. Uh, okay, it's changed. Let me double check. Okay, I just uh, make the Contoso, this configuration provider is uh, as the active configuration provider. So I go to tax configuration. And uh, so as I explained in, in, a, in my last session, when you try to extend the configuration, the first question you need to answer is whether you need to extend the taxable document or you need to, you just need to extend the tax document. So taxable document is a data model and it contains all the fields which are needed for, for tax document. So basically all the fields which are needed for either you know tax applicability calculation or posting so we are just trying to add a new component and uh, it is applicable for certain item so from applicability perspective we need a field which is probably item id and uh, since it's calculated per unit we also need a field uh, like unit so user can specify different tax amount per different unit so Let's first check whether we have this field in the taxable document. So we click the designer of the taxable document Indian to check what we have in this taxable document. So we go to line to see whether we have a like item ID so we can um, make the anti-dumping duty only applicable for certain item. So as you can see, we have item ID here. And let me check the unit. 
So actually you can search instead of looking for it. So let me down, let me check. No. OK, OK, we have this unit. So basically we have all the field to support this new task component. So that means we don't need to touch the tax taxable document. So the only thing is we just need to extend the tax Indian GST, which is a tax document. So we click create a configuration. There are two options. We don't want to create a new tax boat document. Instead, we just do want to create a tax configuration derived from this standard Microsoft tax document. So give it a name. Okay, so we have this uh, new tax document created. The status is in draft status. And then I click designer. So according to our analysis, um, anti-dumping duty is a special kind of customer duty. We should, so in a standard configuration, we actually we have two tax type, customer duty and GST. So we should add a new tax component under customer duty. So I select customer duty and then I click add a button. There is only one option for me to choose, which is tax component. So I just want to add a new tax component. So I give it a name, anti-dumping. So I use the same description. I click OK. OK, so according to the flow chart I shared in my last session, I add a task component. The next thing I need to do is I need to determine what, what kind of the tax measure is are needed in order to do the task calculation and the posting. So I select this task component so I can add a tax measure. So tax measures are something like tax rate, uh, base amount, tax amount, load on inventory amount. So basically these are the building block to for the tax formula and the posting. So I select tax measure and the first question you need to answer yourself is you first you first need to check whether uh, there are existing measures which can be used directly instead of you creating new tax measures. So if you click this button, you can see all the existing uh, measures in the system. So you click base amount, definitely you need a base amount and uh, you need a t rate and also you need a uh, tax amount. So it is a multi selection. You just, uh, I just select the three measures. So I click select button and I click OK. OK, so we have three measures. That's basically OK to support the, um, this, this anti dumping scenario. And since this anti dumping is calculated per unit, so we need to modify the tax rate a little bit. So tax rate is a little bit different from the other tax, um, tax rate is a little bit from the other tax measure. It's actually a composite measure. So you can have, so that's the reason you can see it is a tree structure. So we have a rate and under it, there is a rate, another rate. So this, this represents the normal, you know, tax percentage, tax rate percentage. So actually I can add a one more sub measure here. So I click add a button. I can say it is a tax value, which means the tax amount per unit. So here are two types. I need to choose the factor instead of the rate because it's tax amount per unit. So I choose factor, I click OK. So I save. So, so until now, I add a tax component with some tax measures. So the next thing I need to do is I need to decide the applicability rule for this new tax component. As we just analyzed, 
anti-dumping duty is only applicable for certain products, so we should um, highlight this tax component and then go to lookups. So as I explained in my last session, there were two ways to to configure the applicability rule. One is you can write some condition in the act tax component level. Basically, it means it's kind of hard code. It's a static config static uh, rule, which which can be used for all the in all the customers' environment. And we can also configure lookups, so it's similar as uh, as a, as a condition. But there are two options here. One is configuration. In case it is configuration, means the rule is also static. So it's logically it's the same as you do in the condition, but it's different way to 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 configure the applicability rule. Okay. But in case, in our story, anti-dumping duty is for certain products, certain items. So we need to use the data in the user-defined in the finance and operation. So that's the reason we should choose the source type as the user data. But let's first choose the correct column to determine whether anti-dumping duty is applicable or not. So, and, you know, according to our analysis we want to use item ID to to determine whether it's applicable or not so I select item ID I click this button I click OK and we need to make sure the source type is user data so I can set up the applicability rule in the in a finance and operation instead of in a configuration so I save it so we are done for the applicability and uh, one more thing we also need to decide how the tax rate is determined so because anti-dumping duty is calculated per unit so probably uh, there is different tax value per different unit unit of measure so it's a good idea probably to add a one more add a column for unit so user can specify different tax value for different based on different unit so again I click this columns I pick up the unit so I, again actually you can search I can search okay So basically, we're now I'm I'm done with the applicability for both tax component and tax rate. <coughs> so next thing we should do is for tax calculation. We need to decide how the tax is calculated for this tax component. So again, we should go back to the tax component, and we have this uh, formula tab so in here we can configure the calculation logic so you can have a, a set of formulas so i just added the first formula and uh, click this button so since it's a task calculated per unit so the base amount equals quantity so just it doesn't it it doesn't like the other task component which calculate per 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 net amount or assessable value where you 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 write your formula like base amount equal assessable value or a net amount in other country instead we should uh, the base amount should equal uh, quantity so we have the base amount then we we write formula for for tax amount tax amount equals um, base amount times tax value. You click save. If you want, you can try to test it. So this is the anti-dumping base amount. Yeah, so I can say, okay, suppose the quantity is five. 
and uh, what is the uh, tax amount? Yeah, tax value. Suppose that the tax value for for a unit like EA or pieces is, for example, is 10 rupee. And I click OK. So you can see the result. The the yeah, the quantity is five and the tax per unit is 10. So that's the reason we can see the tax amount is 50. And of course, quantity is five, right? So that's correct. So let's click OK. And we give it a name. So because this formula is basically applied for, can be applied for all kinds of transaction, no matter it's import order or export order. So I don't need to ch change the condition here. So again, let's save it. So we're done for the applicability and also for the calculation. So last thing, almost the last thing is the is the posting. So how you want to post, uh, do the tax posting. So again, we have a similar UI as the formula. We add a posting profile. And since it's a customer duty, the posting logic is the same for import export order. So I can first give a description, import export order. And then I don't need to write any condition here. Instead, I go directly to the detail fast tab. I choose the measure. I'm going to do the posting. Definitely, I will post the tax amount. So I select this tax amount. So um, we have debit side, credit side. So I need to select the tax expense. So debit tax expense and credit tax uh, payable. So again, when you configure the posting provider, so the first thing you need to check whether there are uh, there are existing tax account which can be used directly for your scenario. If not, you need to add the new tax uh, tax account. We will cover that in the SEJ scenario. I'm sure you, I'm going to show you how to do that later. So let's first com complete this scenario. So I choose tax payable. So debit to tax expense and credit to tax payable. Okay, again, I, I, I save it first. So yeah, so we have, uh, we have, we have applicability calculation and posting. And the, the last thing I need to do for this component is how you want to manage the accounts for this uh, for this new task component, so to keep it consistent with other task component under customer duty, I choose uh, two column here: import order and export order. Which means you can maintain different set of accounts for import order or export order. So I click save. Okay. Okay, we're almost done for the anti-dumping duty. One last thing is uh, now it's really the last thing because uh, for import order, we have both, actually we have both customer duty and anti-dumping. So actually in that case, IGST will be calculated on top of customer duty, including all the, uh, you know, customer duties like a BCD, SWS, anti-dumping duty. So we also need to change the formula for IGST so let's go back to, yeah. So if you go to IGST formula to check the formula for base amount of IGST, you will notice that the base amount of IGST equal line base amount plus BCD tax amount plus SWS tax amount. So definitely we need to consider this new customer duty. So we should go here and a plus anti-dumping tax amount. Click save. Okay. Okay, so that's all for anti-dumping. Let's complete it.
Okay, so before I move on to the next uh, scenario, let me actually try to test this new configuration. So you should go to text setup. And we have, a, I have a already created a solution which named GST and there are a synchronized configuration. So what I need to do to deploy this new configuration into this finance operation is I need to click the new button. And from here, you can see all the completed configuration in this environment. So I should choose task Contoso. I click save and uh, I click synchronize. So when you create a sync, click synchronize, Basically, it will do two things. One is it will deploy the configuration into the finance and operation, so you can use this configuration for uh, for 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 other taxable transaction. And beside that, we you know for each configuration, you have tax setup, uh, which are you you which are used to determine the tax rate and uh, to the the account setup. So all this setup in, we call it tax setup. So it's, we have the option for you uh, to decide whether you want to copy the existing tax setup from other existing configuration. So I would like to copy from the, uh, yeah, let's copy from this Microsoft standard configuration, which means this 228. I click okay. So it is error message tell you that you are going to delete the configuration setup. So and replace it with the configuration of the 224 setup data. Do you want to continue? Yeah, you, I'm going to click OK. It will take some time because there's a lot of setup in the original configuration and the system will also do some validation. So I have this uh, deployed synchronized configuration, but the status is still available. I need to activate it. Okay, and then I need to go to attack setup. So please notice that there is actually a drop down list on top. You can, although this is the current active configuration, but still you can switch to other configuration to view the, the tech setup data. So the first thing you notice is under the customer duty, we have a new task component available here. So if I go back to the standard configuration, so you can see there's only BCD SWS under the customer duty text type. But now let's go back to uh, task Contoso, which is extended configuration. Uh, we have this additional component. So I select this one. The first thing I need to do is I need to add a setup here. So I click item, no, I just make it yeah, 1105. I click save. Okay, there is a minor issue here. Actually, we shouldn't have so many dummy uh, row. And uh, yeah, this is applicability. I need to also select a period. So I use let me take a reference of existing component. Okay, so I think let's use, yeah, customer settlement. So because just like the standard tax engine, I mean, sales tax code period is a mandatory field. So you must uh, select a period for each tax component so you can do the settlement uh, in a later 
uh, afterward. So I select a period for it. I, I configured the item ID uh, for this anti-dumping duty, which means it is applicable only for this specific item. Okay, and actually you notice we have a counting tab here. You can specify what are the accounts for import or the export order. But since I already configure the account in the task in the customer duty level, and uh, I would like all these components use the same set of accounts, so I don't want to um, add a more account here. But of course, if you want to, if you want the system use different account for this anti-dumping duty, you can definitely do it. So you click. For example, you can say, okay, for export order, and I want to use a different account for tax payable tax expense from, you know, compared to the general, um, you know, main account I maintain at the tax, ta tax, tax type level. So, but anyway, I don't want to do it right now. So just to keep it simple. Okay, I save it. Um, okay, let's go back to anti-dumping, right? Let's go back to this import order. So we have this 1105, which is ap actually applicable according to this setting. Let's click tax document. So as you can see for now, there is still BCDSWS, but if I click recalculate, I hope I can see this anti-dumping duty. Okay, that's great. So we can see anti-dumping duty here. Let's check the tax amount. Oh, we have base amount one, but the rate is zero. Okay, so definitely the tax amount is also zero. So we forgot one thing. We need to maintain the tax rate. Okay, I say for this unit of measure, uh, the tax value is, let's say, let's say 10, click save. Now I click recalculate again. Okay, so we have this base amount, which equals to equals quantity. We have this tax, um, we have this tax value. The tax amount is 10. And also, we let's check the base amount of uh, IGST. Let's let's select the line. Okay, the yeah. Let's use calculator. So let's try to compute. So the base amount for BCD is one one eight zero eight one seven. So the IGST should equal to like this. Also, mm, IGST customer duty. Oh, wait a second, not this one. Uh, should be the line base amount and plus uh, the BCD, which is 1,181, and the SWS, which is 59.08 plus 59.8, and plus, uh, uh, yeah, let me check again, looks uh, a little bit strange. Base amount. Fifty nine zero eight and ten. Okay, yeah. So yeah, as you can see, the base amount of IGST equals to the base line base amount plus BCD plus SWS plus uh, anti dumping duty. We just added, so it's it looks correct. Okay. So basically, that's all for this uh, first scenario. I'm not going to post it because. All the rest um, is the same. So let's go. Let me go back to the to the slides. Uh, 
The next one is a little bit different. This is SEZ. So we know in India we have uh, we have a, a special economic zoom. Um, basically, actually, it's also it's a um, in other country we also have this uh, we also have this concept actually. So primary objective is to to develop the export scenario in India, you know, by attracting more foreign investment and offer offering an international competitive market. So basically. The SEZ is a duty-free geographic geographic regions, and uh, you know the economic laws are different from a country's conventional e economic laws. From a tax perspective, uh, there were two things we need to consider. The first one, it is it require separate registration for SEZ unit under GST law. So that means for business, if um, for certain state, uh, I suppose uh, for certain state, you you have business in inside SEZ and outside SEZ within the same state, you are still be you are still required to register twice, one in the in one in the area outside of SEZ, and another is in within the SEZ. Another thing is there were two ways to make supply to SEZ. So one is used you you do that you you make the supply with payment of IGST. The posting will be like this. Um, you have um, so the the first line is uh, is account receivable. Um, unlike the normal sales, you will debit to an IGST refundable account instead of tax recoverable account. And uh, of course, this is uh, this is sales um, sales account, and the last one is the same as a normal sales, which is IGST payable. So basically, the special thing for for selling to SEZ is you you should debit to a special account, which it called IGST refundable account. And of course, there is another method you you can you can supply you can do a supply without payment of IGST. Then actually. Um, there is no GST applicable in this case. So basically, this is a business requirement. So back to um, our, back to GTE story. So what is the impact to finance and operation, and what is the impact to um, to to our G, G, GST, config, uh, GST configuration? So again, firstly, we need to check whether there is any X plus plus impact. So uh, the first requirement is you you should user or business should have a separate registration in SEZ area. So we need to add an option to customer or vendor's address to indicate the whether you know this address is within SEZ. So we we need some UI changes in the customer vendor address or other places according to. It's also it's possible you you add this change in the you know in the enterprise registration number master that is also acceptable, and also another change is um, we have two ways to to make sales to SEZ so we need to add an option for for you to to decide whether you want to create made a sell make a sales to SEZ with payment or without IGST payment so we also need to add an option to sales or purchase. Um, dialog box or form to to let the user to decide which which way he want to make supply to SEZ. But good thing is if you want if you do it in the run one version, I mean the ten plus version, uh, we are we have already provided this UI change. You don't have to um, do anything for the UI. So that means in in run one version there is no impact in X plus plus. So then we come to the configuration impact. Oh, sorry. I think the, there is some issue here. I think I'm really sorry. Uh, let me check. Okay. Okay. I think there is some issue, but let me try to. So the configuration impact is firstly 
make sure let me do it right now make sure igst is applicable right or sells to sez right so make sure igst is applicable for sales sez even the the ship from state is the same as ship to state okay because by default if it's inter interstate supplier it is cgst plus sgst so this is the first thing we need to do and make sure um the uh, the make sure the igst debit to actually refundable account instead of uh, the tax recoverable amount uh, account, right? Actually, basically that's all. So since, um, yeah, so this uh, another part. Sorry, I think I I should divide it into two part actually. So taxable document, right? Taxable document, right? So for taxable document, you need to add a to fields to add two field for SEZ sorry SEZ party and uh, with IGST IGST sorry IGST payment so since we need to uh, add option in the in the finance operation so and these two fields will affect the tax logic we maintain in the tax document. So definitely we need to add this additional field uh, for this two uh, additional field in the, in the taxable document. And then, you know, we have this, uh, uh, wait a second, tax document. And from tax document, we need to do uh, following two things. Okay, so let me, yeah. So let's go to financial operation. Okay. So the first thing I need to add a two more field. So so that means I need to extend the taxable document. So I I select this taxable document Indian. I click configuration. I want to uh, derive. I create a taxable document model derived from taxable document India Microsoft. So I give it a name. Before I change the configuration. Let me try to show you the UI change. I mean, for this two option. So let's go to customers. So I'm in the wrong one version. So if you go to the customer or vendor master and go to the address and I click advanced and uh, in the general tab uh, we have this EPT code there are several options there um, but you know, for now let's just select SEZ which means we have um, the tax registration under on this address is SEZ uh, registration I click save now, if I create a sales order, so I select that customer. And please notice that we have this Visa tax payment. So, of course, we, you, if you choose with tax payment, that means you want to, in case it is a sales to SEZ, you choose the the with tax payment method. 
of course you can choose without tax payment to uncheck it so let's choose with tax payment so i select the site and warehouse i click ok mm. 11.04, save. So let's open the tax information. So actually, I don't need to change anything. That is also a benefit that, um, you know, GTE can, pr can bring to the customer because basically you don't need to enter, enter additional field when you create a sales transaction or purchase transaction. It is fully automated process that GTE will decide what is the correct tax type or tax component or tax rate is applicable for this transaction. But I'm opening this tax information for you to notice that we have an additional parameter here uh, called SEJ in case the uh, customer address, uh, the EPC code for this address is SEJ, then this will be uh, defaulted as yes. So I cancel it and uh, I click sell button and open the tax document. Okay, so this is CGST and SGST. Why? Because it is inter, inter you state transaction. So actually you can get it from, uh, from the input, uh, view tax input. So yeah, th this is one thing I can um, highlight here. So if you select the header, you click view tax input. This is the input uh, to GTE, so you can you can check what is what are the field value which sent to GTE for for tax calculation and posting and applicability. So uh, let's let's select a line. So from here you can see there is an interest date. Mm, service category. Oh, okay. It's at the top. Uh, yeah, so it's not an interstate because it's, uh, why? Because uh, uh, we can actually find the uh, state. Yeah. City of origin is Bangalore, and the consumption city is also Bangalore. So that's the reason it is it is not an interstate transaction, right? So that's the reason we can see there are CGST plus SGST for this transaction, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's basically the normal sales transaction. Although you know the the address is SEJ, but actually still it is. Um, from GT's perspective, it is still CGST and um, SGST for this transaction because we haven't changed the configuration. So let's change the configuration to support this scenario. I just create a taxable document count total. Again, the status, the initial state status is draft. I click designer. So again, it's a tree structure. You should decide which level you want to add this new field. Um, actually, we want to add a two more fields. One is SEZ. So whether the customer or vendor is uh, SEZ, um, another one is uh, with IGST payment. So we should add a, let's first select the header and uh, we add a field called IGST payment payment and you need to choose the correct item type I so with IGST payment is actually any is enumeration so there are two options yes or no so I choose the value as inner so add it so since it is enumeration so you can select item reference to assign a reference model to this new field. So I assign a no, yes, which is an enumeration with two options. One is yes, another is no. I click OK. Uh, 
Okay, and then I still need to add one more field, which is SEZ. I select a line because SEZ is defined in the address level, so it is theoretically possible that for the first line, uh, the address is SEZ, for the second line is, is not SEZ, but of course from bus real business perspective it's not the case, but let's follow the design. So I select the line and uh, again, I want a field called SEZ party either customer or vendor. So I, again, the type is also enumeration. So I click yeah, click add button. So again, it's an enumeration. I assign a, I need to assign a reference model to it. So still I'm trying here, I just want to remind you the, 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 the reason why we have this uh, reference model. So reference model is for you to um, to um, to easier um, to, for example, suppose this field will be used in the text setup. You don't want to specify um, or in the configuration. I mean, in the in the, in the lookups, you don't want to type the correct value for this field. If you want to use a use a drop down list to, to pick up the correct value. So you should assign the reference model to this field. Okay, so that's a that's a reason we have this concept of reference model. So I click save. Okay, so then then okay we have this model but we also need to do model mapping to get the value from the finance and operation, from the transaction you're going to create in the finance and operation and the data model. So we click this map model to data source. I, so there's a lot of model mapping per each transaction type. So let's focus on the sales transaction. So I click sales order, I click designer, So I just want to show not mapped only, not not mapped only field. So on the right side, I can see we have this uh, with IGSG payment, and I want to map to sales order I, with IGSG payment. So I bind it, okay. And then we have lines. Uh, we have this SEZ party in the lines in the model line. We also have this field we just added. Okay, save. And uh, sales order, we also need to do it for sales order palm. SEZ party. Please note that actually, so in the data source, we have this uh, field and actually you notice that we, the, 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 the name of this field in the data source is exactly the same as the field name I added into the data model. So for, um, AX 2012 R3 environment. So there is no concept of model mapping. So in that environment, you should uh, write X plus plus code to, to, to set the value to the data source, but you should make sure that the value field, the, the field name in the X plus plus code is the same as you define in the model, just like what you can see here, okay? Uh, let me bind it. Um, okay. So I done. I just done model mapping for sales order and sales order palm. Yes, that's all. That's all for sales. Let's save it. And. 
and to save it again before I close it. So I need to complete it in order to use it in the um, in the text document as is a click OK. Okay, so we have a completed taxable document. I go back to this extended tax document I created for anti-dumping duty and I click designer. So because I just extend the taxable document and definitely you want to use that taxable document for this tax document because the only reason we add a SEJ party with IGST payment, this additional two fields, because we want to use this field to determine, to configure the tax rules, like applicability posting calculation in a tax document. So you need to make sure that in your extended tax document, it use that model use that taxable document it just created so if you select the tax document this node in this property tab there are two fields you should pay attention to one is data model so by default as you can see the data model is the standard data model standard taxable document provided by microsoft so you should switch the data model or you will not be able to see that additional field you created. So I should I choose this taxable document Contoso and you need to choose the correct version. So there is just one completed version for that taxable document. So I choose this one, this version one. That action will refresh the taxable the tax document with the new data source. Do you want to continue? I click OK. So by click OK, system will replace a, replace the data model for this tax document. So it will do some validation to make sure um, that all the field um, the tax document depends on are exist in this new data model. So for example, suppose that GST like uh, like anti-dumping duty we just created, we say, okay, it is the its applicability is determined by the item ID. So definitely when I change the data model, I need to make sure that there is item ID in this new data model. So I just switch the data model. I click OK save. I hope you still remember that uh, for tax documents, uh, they, we just need to change uh, basically two things. One is we need to make sure it is IGST for sales to SEZ area, even is within the same state as the shift from state. And also there was special posting logic for supply to SEZ. So let's go to GST. Check the can look uh, checks applicability logic here. So this nothing. So it's just to make sure it's not another non GST. And if we check the lookups, so we have some lookup here. So so basically, I'm not sure whether you know that the lookups here we have several row, and the relationship between each of these row is all. So that means either you satisfy the first row or the second row or the third row, then, you know, GST, this text type will be applicable. Okay, so, so take the first row as example. It means tax direction is sales tax receivable, which means it is a purchase transaction. So for purchase transaction, the company shouldn't be, should be a regular taxpayer, shouldn't be a compensation scheme. scheme. And the customer sh should have GST registration number. 
So you are not purchasing from a from a normal customer. You should purchase from a business, and it's not an exempt. So that's the meaning of the first row. So actually, we don't need to change anything for the for for this GST uh, text type level. So let's go to CGST. <laughs> So again, so for CGST, we also have condition. We also have lockups. So if you check the lockup, it means the meaning is very straightforward. It means CGST is not applicable for interstate and import order. So so that means, or we put it another way. So that means. It shouldn't be an interstate, interstate transaction, and also it shouldn't be an import order. But so we definitely need to change something here, right? Because if you create a sales transaction to SEZ within the same state, then it means it is not an import order and it's not an interstate. Then you know system will show CGST as you can as you just see right in this. Um, in the cells, right? So we should change, change it, right? So we should add one more column, actually. We should consider whether it is, whether the, whether it is uh, the customer vendor is the SEJ party, right? So I add this column here. So it means it shouldn't be an interstate, shouldn't be import or the end. It shouldn't be a SEJ party, right? So that means you are not selling or purchase from an SEJ customer, SEJ uh, vendor, right? So that's the change for SCGST, and also we should do the same for for SGST. <laughs> So yeah, back to the reference model. So as you can see, I didn't type no or yes, but I can select, right? Why we can select? Because behind this drop-down list is actually the reference model I attached to SEJ party. I added into the extended taxable document. So that's the reason why we have this concept. And that's the reason, concept of reference model. And that's the reason I attached the reference model to uh, to the taxable document field. Again, I choose no. So by doing this, I I just make sure that for for sales to SEZ or purchase to purchase from SEZ, there is there is no CGST in SGST because it's always IGST for such transaction. So I go to and finally I go to IGST. So I expect that IGST will be applicable for sales to SEJ. So I need to, again, I need to consider, right, for the SEJ party. And also for, we also need to consider with and without IGST payment because in case user make the supply to SEJ with, without IGST payment, we don't expect that there is any GST component. So I select with IGST payment here. And also SEJ party. Uh, okay, here. Okay. So according to the current lookup, it means IGST is applicable for in case it is interstate, but not an import order, or it is import order. So what we should do, we should add one more record here. We should say, okay, IGST is applicable for for the transaction. The SE the customer vendor is SEJ party, and user to make it as a with IGST payment. Okay, I save it. So I just done the first part change in the in the in the tax document and then the final thing i need to do is to to make sure that the posting is correct for 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 sales to 
uh, sales to SGJ party. So let's go back to go to the posting profile. So we have a lot of posting profile for this IGST because it handles different uh, scenario. And uh, in Indian, you know, for for sales, you can see we have this. We have three different posting profile depending on this um, scrapping method, which is not available in other country, but. But definitely the first thing we should do is we should make sure that this posting profile will not be hit for sales to for for sales to SEZ. So let's click the condition. So basically we are we try I just want to exclude this posting profile for sales to SEZ party. So it's a little bit complex um, condition, but from our side, it's simple. We just make sure, okay, I put an end. I say, okay, SEJ party. So it means, okay, this posting profile is for normal cells, which is not for cells to SEJ party, SEJ. So I click save. So if you check the uh, the posting logic, so it's it will debit the payable amount to to customer balance and credit to tax payable. But we sh we want the the system to debit the payable amount to tax refundable account. So we should exclude this posting profile for sales to SEZ. So I skip this uh, additional posting profile for sales, but definitely. Uh, for whole for complete solution, you should do the same for this uh, sales invoice. And then we need to add a one more posting profile. For sales to SEZ. So in this session, just showing to the configuration change for for sales, but for the purchase is similar. So I can say, okay, I give a description to like sell supply. Let's say to SE. Okay. And then we need to To write some condition because I want to make sure that this posting profile is only for sales to SEJ, not for other transactions. So we need to consider several conditions like SEJ party equals uh, yes, and uh, enable accounting is yes. And uh, so basically, for, for currently, you should make sure. For all the formula, you should have this uh, uh, enable accounting equal yes. Um, and also the we need to make sure that the tax direction, tax direction equals to sales tax. Oh, that's all. So, and then, okay, let's do the, Post simplify. So tax payable. Okay. Where is the tax payable? Oh, sorry, it's payable amount. Okay. So I wanted to debit the tax refundable account. So let's see whether there is tax refundable account. So we have bank account and customer account, but no tax refundable account. So I should type the account I want to post to refundable, tax refundable. So just click button tab. System will check whether there is such accounts in in a, in a configuration. So if there is no, so it asks you, do you want to create a new one? I click OK. Um, so here is the name. You don't need to do anything here. You can give it a description, but which you know is optional. But pay attention to this tax accounting provider. We have a lot of accounting provider. 
So accounting provider means, as you can see, uh, party. Party means it is either customer or vendor. Inventory means inventory. So we have tax. Tax means tax means it's a tax account, which means you need to do some setup in in the in the in the tax setup. So if I go to tax setup and select a GST, so these tax recoverable, tax payable, tax expense, these are all tax accounts. But if you choose the if if the tax if the posting type and its tax accounting provider is party, you don't need to specify anything for the setup because the the engine know that for this certain customer, for this certain sales transaction or purchase transaction, what is the customer or, and what is the vendor, right? So you do not need to you do not need to do any setup later. And also the same for for inventory, but for tax account for ledger account, you need to do some further setup to in a in a, in this tax setup form to let the you let the system know what exactly account you want a system to to post to. So back to this tax refundable, the correct tax accounting provider is actually ledger. I can say either it's ledger or it's tax. Suppose it is ledger, which means okay. Oh, sorry, uh, hold on a second. So basically, what is the difference between tax and ledger? So if it's a tax, then it will impact the tax settlement process. But if it's a ledger, it is a pure, there is no impact to tax module. It's a pure accounting. So this, right, we, we, have, a, we have tax trends, we have accounting system, we have tax uh, module, right? So if there is impacts for tax reporting or settlement, you should make it as a tax accounting provider. If not, if it's just a pure accounting, there is only pure accounting impacts that you should use ledger. So for now, let's set as, uh, make it as a ledger. And I click OK. So I just add a new accounts and I decide to debit to this account and I credit to tax payable. There is existing account here. Okay, I click save. Okay, let me double check the posting profile and the sales order in the sales transaction. Yeah, enable accounting. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that's almost everything I need to do. Again, I change the status to complete. Okay, so again, let's go back to text setup. Click configuration. A new, click new. I can see there is one more version. Click the second version. Click save. Uh, click synchronize. I so this time I just want to copy the setup from the last configuration. So I click OK.
Okay, this time it take a longer time. I click save and uh, click activate. So let's click setup. Because I just add a new tax account, which is tax refundable account. So I need to do some further setup in, the, in here. So, okay. So as I explained, right, we have this, uh, we added this tax refundable, the accounting provider is ledger. So you need to do some further setup to specify what exactly account you want to, you want the system to post to. So I, I set it to, 131190. Save. Okay, so let's go back to this cells to SEJ. So this clicks tax document. And I click recalculate. Okay. So now the same sales transaction, but now I just click recalculate. You notice that it is IGST applicable, right? And uh, if you check the view in tax input, you will notice that uh, it's with, with IGST payment, right? And in the line level, we can see, we can check the SEJ party is yes. So let's do more one testing. I go to header and uncheck the waste payments. Now I check the tax document again. So click recalculate. So there is no GST applicable for in this case, which is also expected. So let's uh, check the waste tax payments. We calculate again. So we have this IGST and uh, let's confirm the sales order. And then I click invoice. So let's make it a complete uh, scenario. Before I post it, let me double check the tax document in the invoice level. Okay, it's the same. Let's click OK. Okay, so invoice is posted. Uh, let's check how it is posted. Let's check the voucher. Okay, great. You can see it is posted to IGST refundable account, which is 131190. I set it up in the in here, which is expected. And uh, yes, it's debit to this account and credit to um, CGST payable. Of course, this is account name. Actually, it is uh, uh, IGST payable. Okay, so it's it can calculate correctly for sales to SEJ and it can be posted correctly. So that's basically everything for for the SEJ scenario. Okay, so we are almost done. But uh, before I close my session, I want to mention one more thing. Um, yes, in the configuration. Okay. In run one version, I cannot, yeah, I'm, I can not recall the details. Maybe in 10.0.2 or 3, we introduced this column, uh, this skip model mapping. So the meaning of this skip model mapping being is, is, is very straightforward. That means in case you, you didn't add any uh, it didn't you, you didn't extend the taxable documents, and you 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 you, you it, so so that means you didn't uh, do additional model mapping in your in your intended taxable document, or 
just in our case, so I click the designer. Or in the, for example, in the purchase order, purchase invoice. Okay, so in this data source, so for SEJ, for this with IGHT payment, we have this data source, and you also have the field in, in your model. And you can make sure that the field name is the same as the field name you have in this in this data source. So actually, you do not need to do any model mapping here. It's just to, since the name is the same, and uh, in the configuration, in this configuration, just make sure, okay, I click edit. I can mark it as, okay, I skip model mapping. So basically, so by basically by using this option, it can improve the performance, the calculation performance a little bit. And also system will do implicit mapping for field it defined in the model with the field you, we have in, the, in this special data source. If their name are the same, system will do the implicit mapping for you. So two benefits, one is you don't have, you don't need to do additional mapping in model mapping, and another is performance improvements, okay? And uh, yeah, so, and I hope you know that for model mapping, we have two ways to do model mapping. So in case you can go to this, uh, we have this stocksmicrosoft.com, and in globalization and uh, in Indian, we have a session tax engine overview. We have this end-to-end -end extension scenario based on UTGST. And inside of it, there is one session for you to understand the, the way to do model mapping. Okay. Yeah, we have two ways. One way is you do the mapping by taxable document data source. So basically, you need to write some method to get the value you want to have. For example, in our SEJ case, you need to write a method for SEJ party and a method for with IGST payment. So it's the same as a normal customization. You should know how to write such method to get any value from the transaction. And then you have this method so in this case, it is whether it is interest state with union territory, and then you need to write a, a specific method, which is specific for GTE. So you need to extend these classes and define the field name. Make sure this name is the same as the field you are going to add in the taxable document. And then last step, you need to call a special method, this line object set field name. This is a field name, and this is a method which is used to get a value from transaction. So that's a one way. Another way is, is a pure model mapping. This is the second way, which I just showed you in the SEJ scenario. So you can go the first way, and then in the text setup, and make sure that the data source, make sure, you know, this field name is the same as you have in the model, in the taxable document, and then in the tax setup, you can, you know, mark this option. So system will do the implicit mapping for you, and also there is some additional performance benefit. Um, and so we still have some time. I just, maybe I can show you something more, which in a setup, so we know there is a lot of pain point in maintaining this rate table because considering uh, for some customer, they maintain a lot of item here. So for now we provide this import export. So you can export the structure into Excel. And then you know you open this Excel, you 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 do the rate tables preparation in this Excel, and then you know um, you can import from that Excel. So it's it will be easier for you to maintain this table in the Excel, and also easier for you to migrate between different um, environments. 
and uh, later on, we are going to introduce some some kind of rate type. Actually, in my environment, we also we already have it. So, in in a release product, in a release product or procurement category, you can assign a tax rate type like here. So now it's empty. You can add a, something like a, um, high rate, standard rate. Standard. So lower rate, something like this. So you can you can assign the correct rate type to the release product or uh, procurement category, and then you know for the setup you can change the configuration by using the rate type instead of uh, this HS and SAC. So ideally, this table should be uh, pretty small. Okay, so. That's all for today's session. So thank you for listening. Back to Janice. All right, thank you, Richard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a brief moment here and bring your attention to a link that I posted in the Q&A panel. That is a link to a short survey for this web conference. We ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it. We hope that you found today's information helpful, and if you enjoyed today's web conference, have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, or you'd like to submit topics for future web conferences, this is your chance to let us know. We do appreciate the time you take to do this, and thank you for your support. And that is going to conclude today's web conference. The recording and a copy of the presentation deck will be available within five business days. Please look for an email from Learning Media that will include details on how to access those. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenter, Richard, and thank you audience for logging in and joining us today.